Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so today we will discuss uh, in a monetary system uh, in a modern day economy any any society any economy say in india uh, for instance uh, see monetary system has lot of uh, lot of apparatus uh, lot of diamond lot of phenomena lot of lot of tools and uh, features properties are there we will not discuss uh, most of them in details but we will give uh, broader uh, concepts like what is money how a banking system or banks play an important by and all those things we will some select uh, certain concepts we will this course okay so first let okay if i tell money some sort of picture will come immediately in your mind right all of us our mind right so we know what is money but in economics if we want to define what is money what uh, the role it plays okay and and um, different kinds of money uh, what uh, could be there in a society and all that we will we'll, we'll slowly introduce here okay so first uh, first uh, let us let us introduce what is money okay money see you know that uh, barter system right perhaps uh, all of you heard about this barter system what is that where uh, transaction of goods and services uh, were happening in in terms of kind okay by kind what i am referring okay say barter system usually um, or whatever we heard about this barter system no uh, it was there uh, in maybe 200 years 300 years ago in some society and that system has certain problem okay and eventually that system has been replaced or abandoned and has been replaced by money okay so money actually came uh, in the the way history uh, or popular history uh, we know about the introduction of money how money came into the picture okay initially it was butter system and then money money came into the place to replace that butter system so what is butter system butter system basically say suppose i am a farmer okay i am producing rice okay now i want to purchase say uh, wheat from the market okay or i i want to get wheat in exchange of the product what i produce rice okay see uh, so i have to uh, go to the market and I have to find a person uh, not only who is willing to accept or who is looking for purchasing rice from me, but I have to I have to find out I, I have to uh, fulfill another criteria I have to find out one potential purchaser of rice who wants to uh, or who have only wheat in in return of getting rice who can give okay so because uh, that is called in in barter system that is called double coincidence of want double coincidence of want okay what is that if i want say i am producing rice i want to get wheat in exchange of rice so i have to find one person who has wheat who is willing to exchange wheat not only that in exchanging wheat who is willing to accept rice so that is that is called double coincidence of want it's not that i am finding a customer who is willing to get or accept my commodity i have to even find the some selected customers within from themselves who has only that commodity which I am looking for in exchange of my commodity that is called double coincidence of one both way want I have someone that other person is also having someone okay so both way want should match so you can understand that uh, this double coincidence of want is a very restrictive kind of criteria to be fulfilled 
and as a result lot of profitable or yes profitable or mutually beneficial transaction possibilities were lost in the market. How say I have rice, I want to get wheat, there are 5 people are there who are uh, who are looking for exchanging their wheat, but none of them are looking for exchanging their wheat to get rice. So, although uh, people are there who has wheat, who is also willing to sell wheat, okay, but I do not find any customer because uh, I am not looking for the commodity what they have. Okay. So, that double constraints of want actually reduce the transaction to happen in the real life okay, and, and as a result it curtains the transaction possibility. You know that uh, that, uh, that tax system or imposition of tax by the government or any uh, uh, authority of any country or any society, you understand that uh, if tax is imposed there is a dead oil loss and we have discussed that dead oil loss right. Like say this kind of thing, this is demand, this is say this is demand curve, this is supply curve right and government is imposing tax this much quantity per unit of commodities transaction okay, unit tax or quantity tax right. So, this is the total tax revenue because after the imposition of the tax this is the quantity of transaction happening in the in the market okay. and this is this red color uh, triangular area that is called dead weight loss that is the burden to the society because that kind of surplus which could be generated within the society uh, if tax is not imposed. But after the imposition of the tax this kind of social welfare loss is there in the society. Okay. And if you uh, we have also clarified that from where this loss is coming within this segment the people who are there whole lot of customers are there whose willingness to pay is more then the whole lot of sellers are there what is their willingness to accept. So, in this particular point the seller has willingness to pay accept this much only, but the customer who is standing there he or she has. So, this green color distance is this willingness to accept by the seller of that commodity and this blue color distance is actually willingness to pay by the potential customer. Okay. So, there is a possibility of beneficial transaction for both the parties both customers and sellers, okay. but still that transaction is not happening due to imposition of the tax okay. and that is the source of uh, dead oil loss which is the loss of the social welfare altogether. Right? So, since barter system is responsible to reduce the effective transaction or profitable transaction mutually beneficial transaction possibilities are curtained due to barter system eventually uh, it is it is abundant and some universal acceptable universally acceptable kind of instrument came into the picture called money okay and you also understand uh, you have to find this barter system no you have to that due to uh, fulfilling that double constraints of one no lot of or considerable amount of time also is lost in searching to uh, searching for uh, uh, mutually matching uh, double coincidence of want matching kind of uh, customers and sellers. Okay. So, that kind of substantial time is also lost in the process okay. because of this kinds of because of this kinds of drawbacks attached with button system it is eventually abandoned and money is introduced uh, in place of uh, butter system. So, what is money? Money is an instrument okay, uh, which is uh, universally acceptable within any society or within any country. Okay, in India okay, some currency notes paper notes or some metal coins are there okay, and usually released by some government authority maybe directly some central government or maybe some organization government assigned organization like in India central bank reserve bank of India. Okay, they issue the uh, currency notes and all those things. Okay. When I am telling universally acceptable what is that if you have uh, if you have a 10 rupee note with you you look at what is written on that note paper currency you know it is written that reserve bank of india is guaranteeing or something something of this uh, this uh, thing 
of the, this sort it is written there reserve bank of india is guaranteeing to provide uh, indian rupees 10 uh, equivalent to the person who will carry this note that means what that means uh, that paper note uh, paper currency or uh, one printed paper right apparently that uh, paper does not have any value but government or in this particular case reserve bank of india imputed some value on that and everybody is guaranteed by that organization that if i have one note of that thing i can get 10 rupees equivalent anything from anybody or within this country anybody is willing to accept that thing if I want to go there okay? and I want to go uh, to get some uh, commodity or service in exchange of that note everybody is willing to accept at least third party in this particular case Reserve Bank of India is becoming a guarantor to be okay? in this particular case. Right. So, that way some universally acceptable instrument is introduced in a, in a society, in an economy okay? and what we need not fulfill the double constraints upon, I am producing rice, I will sell that in the market and I will get some money and using that money whatever I want, whether wheat, whether bread, whether cloth, whether say egg or some other items, whatever I want I can purchase equivalent amount of that money. Right. So, you can understand that by the introduction of this money, okay, the transaction possibilities and all these things have becomes more smooth and the amount of uh, time lost was there in the process okay, to, to complete or to fulfill this double considerums one clause, okay, the time is substantially amount of time is saved now due to introduction of this money. Okay. So, we will discuss a modern monetary system and every, all of you know what is money. We just gave a, a brief introduction or background of barter system and how money came into the uh, picture uh, in the economy. Okay. Now, what is money? Money, so we will discuss. Um, uh, so, money we told it is an universally acceptable uh, instrument that facilitated transaction. Okay. That facilitated transaction and uh, anybody within that country can utilize that instrument that money to purchase anything to participate in any sort of transaction okay, using that that is the money. Now, uh, types of money types of money okay, different types of money how are those. Uh, so, broadly two types of money are there one is called say uh, fiat money. and another is called commodity money. What is commodity money? Commodity money is basically a money or this kind of some instrument which has some intrinsic value. In that way I can give an example that 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 uh, that metal coins right whatever we have uh, any coin is uh, produced of some metal no either nickel or cobalt or some steel maybe some some of that sort of uh, some metal okay now suppose that coin it is printed on that coin that it is rupees 5 okay 5 rupees coin right so uh, even if tomorrow like demonetization no sometimes back 2 3 years back some demonetization happens by the central government okay so even if say by that kind of de demonetization kind of decree if government comes uh, tomorrow or in future that there is no valuation of this uh, this coin okay like like that uh, that uh, 500 rupee note earlier before the demonetization happened right earlier some old 500 rupee note was there right so after demonetization government told that this money will no longer be valid in the country Okay. So, whatever valuation before that demonetization it was one, one currency paper currency has 500 rupees valuation it becomes 0 completely useless or worthless after that demonetization debt. Okay. So, so, exactly that way if government can come with uh, some decree that uh, tomorrow onwards this 5 rupees coin will not have any valuation at least you can melt or that, that metal what uh, this coin is made up of right that metal you can sell that that metal has some value right so that kind of money who has some intrinsic value is called commodity money old days in historical days no uh, 
uh, sometimes it was that silver or gold coin also right you know that gold and silver these are precious metals. So, even if say we are inputting government is imposing some valuation on say 100 rupee coin or something like that even if that valuation is withdrawn by the government decree like demonetization at least that 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 metal has some valuation in the market right. So, you can get that valuation by transacting the amount of metal okay, whatever is there. So, that kind of money is called commodity money which has some intrinsic value. In fact, in uh, during say, second world war no uh, that uh, prisoners war prisoners they used to uh, engage into transaction inside the prison right using cigarette. Okay. Cigarette as if it is a it is a commodity mind, uh, money kind of thing. Right. So, all the people inside the prison right even if some person is there who is not smoker right he was quite confident that uh, I can utilize this cigarette to purchase or to get something else from someone else. Okay. So, sometimes cigarette in, uh, sometimes uh, passed in, in during the second world war what I am referring it is there in your book that story you can uh, read okay. beautiful story is there. So, cigarette was use, uh, used as commodity money inside the prison by the prisoners okay, they use that. Okay. So, commodity money it has it has some intrinsic value on its own mostly in the modern day what you people are familiar with different monies right Definitely, maybe metal coin may be some sort of commodity money. What is fiat money? Fiat money is that money which does not have any intrinsic, intrinsic value as such like the paper currency. Yesterday it was 500 rupee valuation, today there is nothing because of demonetization by the government or the authority of that country. Okay. So, this kind of note or this kind of money is called fiat money which does not have any valuation and whatever valuation it carries that is due to some imposed valuation by the government or by the authority of that country or of that society okay. that is called fiat money. So, and one commodity money has a problem has, a, has, an, has an intrinsic problem let me discuss here why fiat money is more what should I say may be preferred. Commodity money look at as we told right that metal has some valuation right. So, what will happen look at here one say metal coin right. So, you will see that if you have say one 10 paisa or 5 paisa metal coins right you will see that and every coins no uh, the year when it was printed or when it was made that year is uh, it is written on on that coin. So, if you see that 10 paisa or 5 paisa many of you may not may not see at all, but if you have that thing I think you your father or in your home may be that that kind of coins are there you will see that may be 1950s, 1960s sometimes that it is uh, printed. So, we can assume that when it was printed that time that valuation of the metal out of which that 5 paisa coin is uh, made up right that time market valuation of that metal may be equivalent to 5 paise. Now, because price has increased now if you use that coin still it is 5 paise valuation in the market. Alternatively, if you melt down that to get metal perhaps its valuation is much more than 5 paise. Okay. Uh, so, actually that melting of coins no, it is an illegal offense. Okay. So, in I think 10, 20 years back to 10, 12 years back there was a there was a illegal racket busted by the security agencies in some northern states uh, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal that kind of some pocket was there where people were melt, melting that this old kind of uh, coins to extract the metal and uh, to sell those in the uh, more valuation amount of metal in the market. Okay. So, definitely it is a law and order problem it is a it is an it is a legal it is an offense it is a crime right. So, commodity money uh, has that kind of feature which attracts which may attract this kind of criminal activity, but fiat money does not have because it does not have any apparent intrinsic value right. So, these are the two types of money. Now, let us discuss what are the functions of money functions of money. Money performs broadly three functions. Let us discuss one by one each of them. First, medium of exchange, medium of exchange. 
So, you can understand by medium of exchange what uh, we refer what we told why the uh, money is introduced in order to avoid the stringent requirement of double constraints of want attached with the barter system right. So, money was money is uh, introduced is, uh, is to facilitate more and more transaction that is a medium of exchange people are using this as an instrument uh, which facilitate exchange of goods and services in an economy. Right. So, money plays that role. So, that is a function of money, what kind of function money works or money does that one is that uh, medium of exchange, it helps uh, facilitation uh, of transaction of goods and services. Right. Second is the store of value. Okay. Some wealth right, what I may have, you may have right, sometimes we store that in monetary terms. Right, say suppose I am a farmer, right? I produce rice, right? So that rice it's a valuable some commodity, right? So I can store rice to preserve my value. But do most of the people do that? No. What they do? They perhaps uh, they will sell that whatever they will keep some amount to uh, to maintain their family. Okay, some amount they will keep for their own consumption, own family consumption. But remaining thing they will sell in the market. Right, and they will keep that, that valuation in terms of money. Okay. Why they do that? Because that other commodities, you know, maybe rice or maybe whatever commodities, uh, that every commodity has some uh, lifetime, right? Rice and others, it may be lifetime little bit less, some say maybe some consumer durables, it lifetime says little bit more, longer period of time. But after all, it has some lifetime, right? But money in that way you can preserve it has a huge lifetime even if you have say one paper currency which is little bit tear up uh, there is a formal procedure you can go to the bank and you can deposit that okay, they will give the uh, equivalent same amount of money without any reduction. Okay. So, that kind of thing. So, it will help or uh, it uh, acts as an instrument where people can store the valuation. So, that is how it is called store of value. Okay. And another is that unit of account. What is that? Everything, you know, price or valuation, whatever, we use by default this in monetary units to measure that account. Let me give an example. Say, suppose in the what is the market price today, maybe one piece of salt is equivalent to 10 kg of rice. Suppose. So, when you are visiting a shop, right? Who is a cloth shop or garment shop? What they are telling? They are telling that this shirt price is that much of money, not equivalent to 10 kg of rice or something like that, right? So, that is the thing. So, unit of account, so account or measurement account, right? Money is utilized as the unit of that, okay? And that is for any commodity, any services the maid what is who is coming to your home to perhaps help your mother for household activities right. Uh, they are also claiming that maybe per day uh, I will charge say 500 rupee or something like that no. All in terms of I am telling this maid example because to uh, introduce some service transaction ok. So, whether it is a commodity transaction or whether it is a service transaction all that transaction what is the its valuation unit that is in monetary terms ok. So, this money so, what we mentioned here, it, 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 it plays three broader role in an economy, okay, medium of exchange, uh, unit of measurement and store of value, okay, unit of account or unit of measurement and store of value. Okay. So, these are the uh, what is money and what is, uh, what is its role and what is the thing. Right. Now, in a modern system, okay, uh, actually, uh, in an economy, okay, there is some demand for money and there is some supply of money. Okay. So, there is a, a, a very uh, classical theory of quantity theory of money, quantity theory of money is there, quantity theory of money, theory of money, this is an old theory or uh, classical theory it is sometimes referred, right. Uh, and there is an equation that, that is called quantity equation of money. So, uh, that equation needs to be satisfied to make in the balance uh, of money demand and supply within any economy. 
that equation is called uh, this way m times v equals to p times y. I am I am coming which of this which of uh, m v what they refers to uh, each of them refers to. Okay. So, this is the equation uh, to make uh, money market uh, identity or money market equilibrium something like that. Of course, this is we are just symbolically we are introducing here to familiarize with you that like any other like they say when we discuss that uh, commodity market right there is an equilibrium there is a demand curve for that commodity there is a market demand curve there is a market supply curve of that commodity and there is an equilibrium uh, in that particular commodity market and so on right and that is true for each of the commodities and services okay exactly that in monetary sense or money uh, there is an e equilibrium kind of thing. So, this side is actually supply of money and this side is actually demand for money. Okay. So, this is supply side and this is demand side, why this is supply side and why it is demand side once I introduce each of these components you will understand, but this is we just introduce to familiarize yourself uh, how money market equilibrium looks like and how this or what this uh, equation actually carries. Uh, carries. Okay. But there are a lot of other uh, modern theories are there, Keynes have certain money demand theories, demand for money and certain different kinds of concepts like uh, 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 transaction demand for money, speculative demand for money and all the uh, or the precautionary demand for money and so many other things are there. right? So, those are we are not we are not discussing or we are not keeping that as a part of this uh, syllabus of this particular course, but if you are interested and you are going for some uh, advanced level macro economics uh, course right those things are there. Okay. So, what why this is supply I am telling this m is basically amount m amount of money amount of money or currency money or uh, currency what is in circulation of any country or any economy within an economy. Okay. And v it is called velocity of circulation. Velocity of circulation. What is that velocity of circulation? Say, suppose let, let me give an example. Suppose uh, within a time point, say maybe one day, okay, one particular uh, unit of money, how much different valuation of activities it performs? Let me give an example. Suppose I have a 10 rupee note. Okay. I am spending that 10 rupee note, using that 10 rupee note to purchase some pen from the market. That same 10 rupee note, the owner of that shop uh, to whom I give that 10 rupee note to purchase that uh, pen, he is using that to purchase say some food items from the market. S he is giving say a milk, he is purchasing from the market, right. So, he is giving that to the milk owner. Now, who, who, are, who is getting uh, that 10 rupee note from this particular shop owner uh, to sell his milk? he is using that 10 rupee note to purchase something else. So, in that way suppose in a day on unit time maybe one day one week maybe one month or one year something like that okay. so, unit time within a unit time period how many times one this one uh, currency note is transact or it uh, changing the hands of different people as many it is changing the hands of different people that much valuation uh, of transaction it is actually facilitating right. So, that is why it is called velocity of circulation how fast it is circulating within the different members of the uh, economy. Okay. So, look see this thing no say so, same 10 rupee note within a day I am using that to purchase a pen. I am giving to the shop owner, shop owner using that to purchase milk from the milk owner Okay, he is giving the 10 rupee to uh, milk owner, milk owner is purchasing some rice from the rice shop, he is also giving. So, if that 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 happens uh, within the one year uh, one particular day, so one 10 rupee note actually facilitating 30 rupees transaction. Okay, each 10 rupee note in this way uh, facilitating 30 rupees transaction, right because one 10 rupee for pain, another 10 rupee for some milk transaction, another 10 rupee for some rice transaction. right? So, this 3 is called velocity of circulation in this particular example. 
Okay. So, you can understand that actually this is this m into v some sort of supply side of the money because why? Because one 10 rupee note, but it is actually performing the uh, performing the activity or transaction of 30 rupees. Okay. So, as if that 30 rupees equivalent of money is uh, in supply within that society. Okay, if the velocity of circulation is 3, okay, in this particular example it is 3. Okay. So, that is the supply side of this equ equation and P y P what is P? P is the overall price level, overall price level. Okay. You know that we have discussed that said GDP deflator of a country that is some sort of price index to capture the overall price level for all the possible goods and services whatever is produced within that country, right? within that economy. So, that kind of things that is the overall price level on, on an average what is the price level of the all the goods and services entire commodity and services basket within that country that is the price level P. Okay, and y is the income of that country, income of uh, that economy, income of the economy, overall economy not it is my income, your income like GDP, entire country's income, income of the entire country, country level income, right. So, you can understand P times y, okay, that is the demand for money because uh, this much y amount of total commodities and services are produced within the country and P is the overall price level. That means, for successful or smooth transaction of all these commodities and services what have been produced within that society uh, to facilitate transaction of those uh, goods and services you need P times Y amount of money. Okay. So, that is why we are telling that this left hand side supply side kind of thing we can think of right hand side demand side of the thing we can think of and both supply side and demand side for money and this is called quantity equation of the money supply. Let us stop here okay? and now we will discuss up next lecture that how uh, this uh, money supply and all is determined within a modern economy, modern system and how the bank plays an important role in money supply and all or creating money supply and all. Let us stop here.